Hey guys, what's up? Stark here. Today I'm going to go over motion vectors and how we could drive our particles using motion vectors and what motion vectors are and how they work. And just to point the effect out, I'm sure you can see that there's uh, tons of bubbles, a copious amount of bubbles coming off this shark. But the cool thing is we're not doing any tracking or anything like that. This is totally driven by the shark's motion and where it's moving. So we could dive in. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, cool. So we have sharks right here. Now, let me just show you what a motion vector is. And to pull this off, fortunately, you need this plugin. It's from Revision Effects, and it is the Motion Vectors Create. Let's just turn this guy off. And the reason it's black is because, so what this is doing is it's tracking the frame and, or the pixels really in it. And what it's going to do is, let me just go here and go to next, okay? And we're going to need to turn down this guy, like a lot. So something like 12, okay? Now you'll see where, let me just move through that. It's like sort of this green and red looking type thing. So what it's doing is each pixel is sort of assigned a color value. But in general, just remember that wherever it's red, more red, it's moving on the X and then wherever it is more green, it's moving on the Y. And that's essentially how it works. And what you would use this for is uh, you would render this out, usually a, a motion vector pass. And this is for to, to get motion blur. So you could use something like revision real smart motion blur, and it'll read that, and it'll tell it which direction to blur things. So that's essentially all this is doing, OK? So we're just creating a, a motion vector pass, which we essentially just did, but we have to do a bunch of steps to actually get this to uh, drive our particles, all right? So I didn't really do anything that insane with this. I think 12 is good here, and the sensitivity I'll just put up to 100. That's that's really all, you know? That's all we're going to do. But I only want to have the particles where the sharks are. So if I just used this entire thing, it would still work. It would have the particles everywhere, but they would be everywhere, not just on the shark. If you really want to get a lot out of this, um, you, like driving particles, I would say do something maybe if you have something like on a green screen, someone moving, essentially where parts are isolated so that it could actually read single like areas. And as you can see, the shark obviously is kind of doing exactly that. It's sort of it's on a dark-ish background and it's lighter. So you can see that this image is pretty good because it's dark background with the shark that is lighter. So all we're going to do is actually we're going to duplicate this guy. All right. And let me delete this. OK, so we're just going to have a bunch of layers. So we'll just call this guy vector. OK. and we're going to make a ton of masks, basically. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this. And we're going to go in and <laughs> pretty much do everything I've been doing in my last tutorial. So tint to get it black and white. And again, you don't have to do this, but this is just because, again, it's easier. Because if it's color, you know, like this, it's, it kind of messes with your eyes. And then we're going to go ahead and do a levels. Let me move this guy over here. And then we're going to clamp this guy by like a lot so, so we get this shark like that so that's pretty cool okay and then what we'll do is just add a just a blur so a box blur that's box blur and just do a little bit just to soften it a bit and repeat edge pixels now essentially we have it but let me let me clamp it more because i kind of want to get rid of that top area as much as possible and that'll do and i know this looks kind of wonky i guess but you're getting the caustics on it and that's totally fine it's still gonna it's we're not getting the motion from this layer we're just using it as a mask so we're gonna just do a loom mat so there you go so it's you can see that it's having all those colors so now we'll call this our motion vector Motion vector, there you go, that should be fine. So we're gonna put the sharks at the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and do a new black solid. Bring this over here, cause it goes off the screen. Doesn't have to be black, but we'll call this our bubble particles, okay? 
And I actually have this asset right here. I'll just drag it on the screen. It's just a bubble because we're going to use a texture. So we're going to drop this down here. Okay. And you could find this literally, I just Googled it. It's not the best looking bubble, but it's going to do. Okay. So before we add the actual particles, let's just go ahead and we have to make our motion vector layer 3D. Don't know why. Well, I do know why because it's using it, but let's go to effect. Trap code, which is off the screen here, but that's fine. And then particular. All right, so we have particles, cool. Now we want this to be our continuous, yes. So we want it to be from a layer, yes. And we want that layer to be our motion vector. Okay, so you can see something's kind of happening here, but all it's doing right now is just using the area to emit. Okay, so we're gonna turn down all of this to like zero. To zero, <laughs> not negative. And let me add like 500 particles. Okay, so we have to basically tell this thing to use particle birth time or it won't work and to use the RGB values with the X, Y, Z to velocity. So there is no blue, okay? So it's gonna essentially just use the red and green channel, like the up and down to push the particles, okay? So X, Y, Z, velocity, let's see. And we will do our velocity to like 200. And you'll see, you kind of see it crawling across. Let's, let's do like a lot more. Let's do a thousand particles, start over. You can see how the, it's pretty cool, it's doing that. And actually here, let's turn off the velocity and I'll create the actual trail. So you could create a trail like this, especially using the auxiliary area of particular. But you can see how it's crawling across now. It's being a sneaky shark. All right, so we're essentially almost done, but not yet. We have to do all the like, you know, cool things that make it do what it does. So let's make this directional also. That was the other thing I did too. So we have a shark. Let's do the directional spread to like 86. And I'm just gonna keep previewing this as I change them. We want our velocity to be something pretty high. Well, I don't know. High is relative, but see how it's, it's going everywhere, which that's fine. Not a big deal. It's more in the physics where all the stuff is. So I want to get the motion down before we add the particle because that's, well, partly sell it. So let's go down to our gravity. We're going to do like negative 200. So now we have it rising up. It's going a little bit too high. So we could add air. Now air, this is this is where the good stuff is. We're going to add some air resistance because these are bubbles underwater, not in the air. Because the shark is going forward, let me just shut this off. If you actually look at the footage of these sharks, you could see that there's there's a current going. So not necessarily that these sharks are swimming fast, but there is a current. So I kind of want to match that. I'm going to shut this off because it's just easier to see. So uh, let's say something like... Where are we at? Let me go back down. So air resistance one, the wind X to like, let's do 200. There we go. That's good. Okay. Now we want to do the turbulent field. And if you don't know what this button does, this will actually help you visualize it. So you'll see the amount of noise being added. So turn, I'll just keep it on for now. So let's, we don't want to affect the size. We want to affect the position. So let's do like, 25, so you can see that this line's starting to get weird. Let's turn up the complexity to six, and we could do the scale to something higher, like 50, so that these kind of, because there's a current, so we kind of want these like bubbly guys going through. Now, the one problem you see right away is that it's not starting, it's not already playing, so if you want to do this and really sell it, like actually have it, you need enough footage where it's continuous. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off visualize field. Now let's go to our particle. And we will do, let's go to particle. And size, not worry about that yet. Texture polygon, texture, none, bubble. So we could lower the size and then we'll just up the size of randomness to like 100 so that, you know, obviously, so we get some randomness. Now we're not gonna just use the bubbles 
exactly like this because it's going to look terrible. So we're actually going to use the bubbles as a mat. But let me just go here and turn it on. And I'm going to do the cheapest reflection refraction 2D trick ever in here. So what we're going to do is probably guessed it. I'm going to unlock this guy and then we're just going to pre-comp this. Don't, I didn't mean to hit that. <laughs> and then we're going to call this our particles. Okay. And before I do that, sorry, let's go into here and this will help sell it. It's just motion blur. That's all. Now, Duplicator sharks, and this is where this is where the magic happens with our. Uh, I'm just gonna do a scale. So I'm gonna do negative 100, just to flip it upside down, because these are bubbles. If you look at bubbles, they refract. What we'll do is we'll add a curves, curves, and then we're just gonna clamp the hell out of these guys. So we have the particles, and what we're actually going to do is we're going to switch these up. We want to use the particles as a mat now for our crazy clamped guy right here. So let's go to Luma Mat. Oh, excuse me, Luma Mat. There we go. And then what's cool is we could even just, if it's too much, we can mess with the transparency. Let's just RAM preview it, and we are done. So here we go. I don't have a ton of bubbles like at first, but it's enough and you can see that it's going up and then they kind of just, some die, but that's all it is. So you could do this with tons of things and uh, I really, I would urge you to play around with stuff like this because it's awesome. If I don't have to keyframe anything, then I'm not going to. So that's the best way to work. So anything procedural, sign me up. So thanks guys, that's all.